Oxygen dissociation curves can be modified by temperature, pH, and molecules. Let's start with temperature. Here's a typical oxygen dissociation curve. Remember that at high temperatures, water and blood hold less oxygen. In lots of animals, as temperature increases, the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen decreases. The result is at any given partial pressure of oxygen, more oxygen will be released. Another condition in which more oxygen may be needed is when there's high acidity, so low pH or high H+. Plus. That happens when there's high carbon dioxide or high lactic acid, both of which are produced when tissues are working very hard and they're a reliable indicator of low oxygen. That's called a Bohr shift. Again, it's a decrease in oxygen affinity. The result, again, is that any given partial pressure of oxygen, more O2 is released, and that happens specifically only in tissues that are acid. So imagine that your legs are working hard, exercising like mad, and therefore the pH is low because you've got high carbon dioxide and high lactic acid. This would be the curve in your legs, and there you would be releasing extra oxygen to those hard-working muscles. But if your arms are not working, if your arms relaxed, then this is the curve for your arms. So only in the tissues that are particularly acid will your oxygen be released at a higher amount. In tissues that are not acid, the oxygen will not be released. In the lungs, the acid will be relatively uh, normal because the carbon dioxide is being released into the atmosphere. As the blood moves into tissues that are acidic, more oxygen will be released and then the blood goes back and picks up oxygen in the lungs. So this is specifically in tissues that are high in acid. Another condition in which you might want to release more oxygen to the tissues is when there's high exercise. When animals begin to exercise, they increase production of a molecule called 2,3-DPG, diphosphoglycerate. And 2,3-DPG binds to hemoglobin and changes the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. It decreases the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. The same way that pH does, so acid would do exactly the same thing. The result is a reduced affinity for oxygen, and again, at any given partial pressure of oxygen, more oxygen is released. This is a mechanism to increase oxygen release through the whole body by increasing 2,3-DPG. There's another condition that does this, which is pregnancy in a mammal. The mother produces more 2,3-DPG that decreases the affinity of her hemoglobin for oxygen and frees up oxygen to be released more easily to the fetus. Uh, animals also adjust 2,3-DPG levels when they change elevation. So one of the adaptations to higher and lower elevation is to adjust to 3-DPG levels. Finally, one last point I want to make is that different forms of hemoglobin can have different affinities for oxygen. Different animals actually have different affinities. The next one I want to talk about is fetal hemoglobin. If you think about a fetus, an embryo needs to get its oxygen from mother, so we need to transfer oxygen from the mother to the embryo. If their oxygen dissociation curves are exactly the same, then the fetus is likely to be a little bit short on oxygen. But fetal hemoglobin has a higher affinity than maternal hemoglobin. And the result, again, is that oxygen gets transferred from the mother to the fetus. And keep in mind that the mother often has high levels of 2,3-DPG, so she's already changed the affinity of her hemoglobin curve because of 2,3-DPG. So there are two different mechanism, mechanisms that are increasing oxygen delivery to the embryo.